All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to another IAEI News Live. My name is Thomas Dimitrovich, and today is a recorded session because I am in a meeting in, uh, in Washington, D.C., working on codes and standards to hopefully increase electrical safety. So today's topic is going to be on basements. We're gonna talk about basements and it all starts now. All right. So, I hope you got your cup of coffee, like I do. And it's steaming hot, because I just poured it. And we're going to talk about, I want to talk about basements. But before I do that, we're, I'm coming off of some place where you would get one of these, and I'm missing my ribbon, which was the um, Board of Directors. So I'm a Board of Directors member for IAEI, if you did not know that. I had my IAEI lanyard, and we were at the West western section of the IAEI meeting last week and that was a phenomenal program i really thoroughly enjoyed um i thoroughly enjoyed my time there uh so and i believe if i'm not mistaken i believe that the the what's going on this week if you go to education and you go to section meetings uh oh home page education section meetings there we go uh, iaei section meetings 2023 i believe right now what's the date today today is today is the 25th so the canadian section is over as well so the Canadian section just uh, just went off, and we were at uh, the Western section September 17th through the 20th. So that was last Sunday through Wednesday, and then the Canadian section was the 22nd through the 24th in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I wanted to go there. I really did, and I just could not make it. My schedule is a bear these days. So in any case... Um, the section meetings, these section meetings are, in my opinion, they are like, I don't know how to explain it. They're, they're, they're so much, there's so much, I wouldn't say, I, I, well, I can't say fun. They are, we, we have a blast at, at these at these meetings. And I think it's because you, you, you get time with people that you haven't seen in so, so long. And you have that time to to get reacquainted with each other talk about what happened over the year that you haven't seen each other and you know how how that happens it's like memories flood to your head as you start discussing and then there are questions there's technical questions there's code questions that are on top of your head because at these meetings you have code making panel members uh who want to talk about code requirements. You know, it's it's absolutely refreshing when you can sit with somebody who has the same passion as you do, if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense, because it makes sense to me. I had a blast this, this weekend, or this past week, at the West Virginia chapter. We went up in a balloon. I don't know if you got to see that. I went, I live streamed, uh, I think, actually, I think it was on my panel on my uh, channel, uh, but we um, we went live and uh, we had a uh, we had a balloon at the uh, Jack Jameson and Cindy Jameson coordinated that one. We had a balloon at uh, when, when, I mean when I when I mean balloon when I say balloon I mean a balloon. Okay, <laughs> you're going up in the air, and that was a lot of fun. Mr. Larry Air uh, did his presentation on. Um, on 
the future of the NEC. We had our induction. Oh, and then we had a picture of the Redcoats. I'm, I'm not sure if you, uh, I call them Redcoats. The, um, those, uh, those members, here we go here. These are the individuals who, who all were past presidents of the Western section. So you have a, a really elite group of individuals right here um, who are leaders in the industry, assuming the roles and responsibilities of, the, of, of ushering and, and supporting the Western section and all of the chapters within the Western section. We work together as, uh, as teams to, uh, as a team, to increase safety and make sure that we have opportunities for electrical professionals to get their CEU credits and 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 learn. So uh, these individuals, we got them all together. Everybody who who was a past president, when you become a past president, you get a red jacket. So um, these uh, these individuals have earned their red jacket. Their 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 banners of honor and. Um, they are leaders in the organization, leaders in the electrical industry. Many of these were are heavily involved uh, in the National Electrical Code, um, either either as code making panel members or as chairs of code making panels. So, in any case, we had a great uh, a great meeting, a lot of fun. You know, um, it was it was just out, outstanding opportunity and Nika supported the we have a chart at, at the western section I can't I keep saying we because I'm in the western section but um, the western section has on on Wednesday morning they have what we call or what they call the um, Charlie Trout breakfast and Charlie Trout if you're not familiar Charlie Trout currently there is an email on by in in his memory uh but it is owned by nika because charlie was a member of nika and um we um we were able to get uh, uh you know support from the nika organization to support the charlie trout breakfast so uh it, it worked out it worked out really great. We had a, a great program. Hopefully I'll see you at the next Western section, which I believe is gonna be in Arkansas. So hopefully we will see you there at, or at some other future IAEI event. All right, so let's get to it. We are going to talk basements. Now, um, first thing I wanna say is that this thing right here, <laughs> basements, is not required by the building code to be put on a building. Now, this is an important detail. And why do I say that? So a lot of people will complain about requirements in basements. A lot. <laughs> and suffice it to say that you don't have to put a basement in a via in, in a on in a vehicle. On a on a structure, right? Under a structure. You can build on slab. You can, it's an additional space that we leverage, just like an attic, right? So if you have an attic and you have a room in your attic, if you're leveraging that space way up in the attics, and maybe we'll do an, an attic presentation one day. It's an additional space for the house. It costs you more to make, especially basements. I mean, I know... Um, the first house I built, I forget how many block high I went from my basement, but I wanted to increase the height because I wanted to put a ceiling in. So my basement in that house, whoever's living there, has a beautiful basement uh, because I went up an extra block or two. I think it was like three block I went up. So and it's over 10 foot ceilings in that basement. So um it was a really nice, uh, really nice basement that could be finished or unfinished. And that's another point of discussion, right? So if you think about terminology, if you think about terminology and things that, that, um, that I would argue are almost those gray areas, you know, we had this discussion during the 2020 code cycle 
And in, in, in the past, there were specific requirements for unfinished basements versus finished basements. But in reality, whether it is finished or unfinished is really in the eyes of the beholder. So when you look at something like this, for, for my taste, I may say, look, I'm going to paint those rafters. I'm going to paint the joists and I'm going to put slab, a, uh, put paint the wall, uh, that cement wall, a, a color there. And I'm going to uh, put a TV on the wall, put a couch down there. And in my mind, that's a finished basement. Right now, that just saying it's a finished basement brings requirements with it. So you got to be careful. Um on terminology, but in any case, uh, the, the 2020 code, in, at least in regard to ground fault circuit interrupters, had that debate and that argument, and we just said, look, you know what, it is a gray area, it is an area for, for debate with between electrical inspectors and contractors and builders. So we made requirements that just said basement. We got rid of the words unfinished and finished. So in any case, uh, those are things that you need to think about when it comes to when it comes to uh, the basements. But the first thing that we have to, in my opinion, think about is what is a basement, right? So definitions of terms, terminology is critical to understand. Why is it critical? It's critical because once you meet a definition of, of a defined term, wherever the term is used, then you are subject to the requirements. We just, we had a panel at, um, at the Western section on reconditioned equipment. We had a lot of discussion about what is, what is the definition of recondition and what do I do to a product that would get me into the definition because once you're into the definition, boom, you're into the code and the requirements. So, so we have to understand what a basement is. And the National Electrical Code does not have a definition of a basement. Now the NEC, let's do a quick search. I am going to do a quick search and watch this. You're gonna love this. So now I am in I'm in NFPA link. And if you don't have NFPA link, I'm telling you, you gotta get NFPA link because it is critical to use. Now I am searching the 2023 edition of the National Electrical Code, and you'll notice down here on the right, I have eight hits. Eight. So the term basement is only used eight times in the National Electrical Code. You'll notice the only definition that they have is the definition of a loca damp location. And they have requirements in 210.70. They have requirements in Article 760, branch circuits. And again, there's the term unfinished basements. Okay, so again, <laughs> what is your definition of an unfinished basement. Uh, what else? Uh, so you so got two ten fifty two basements in each separate unfinished portion of a basement. In unfinished basements and crawl spaces, basements, garages, and accessory buildings, two ten fifty two G. We're going to get into all of these. You got to get your copy of NFPA link, or no, get your copy of the code book, or go out to get your NFPA link up and ready because we're going to be looking at code language and we're going to be talking about basement requirements. Okay, all occupancies, a point of control shall be entry permit access to the under four, so 210.70. So we're going to look at 382. We're going to look at 210.70. Remember, that's your lighting. And then um, 2760, Article 760. So there's only eight, eight uses of the term um, for, uh, of the term basement. Okay, so now, I wanted to find where, what is the definition? How do we define it? And you know what I didn't do? I'm gonna look at Merriam-Webster. Webster Dictionary. Dictionary, what do we call this? Basement. <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh, all right, basement. All right, so let's take a look at what, what, what Merriam-Webster, I don't know if that's feminine or male, I'm not sure. 
Basement. The noun. The part of a building that is wholly or partly below ground level. The ground floor facade or interior in Renaissance architecture. And in th uh, the third definition is the lowest or fundamental part of something. It's the basement. Oh, and in chiefly New England, a toilet or washroom, especially in a school. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to go with the first definition, the part of a building that is wholly or partly below ground level. Wholly or partly below ground level. So the part of a building that is wholly or partly below ground level. So in this case, the key on basements is below ground below ground level. I, I, I can understand what ground level is and if it's below. And it says holy, meaning the entire area, part of the building that is under earth, below ground level, or partly. So partly could be a lot of things, right? It could be a lot of things. I remember it could be a lot of things. Partly below ground level. All right, so partly, I hear, and the reason I'm hesitating here is I'm thinking, think about those when you have the, the back of the house where you can walk out. Because I, I, I had a discussion with somebody who said, well, if I can walk out to ground level from my basement, from, from the room that is partly underground, meaning like the front of the house is underground, and say it's on a slope, right? And then the back of the house is not. So pour a portion of that room, that area, that, that story of the house is underground, but not all of it. And then there's a percentage, depends upon how sloped the backyard is, I guess you would say. And here in West by God, Virginia, and in, in many parts of Pennsylvania, um, we have a lot of hills. We have a lot of homes built on those types of hills. So you could have a very small portion of your of that level underground, or you can have a large portion underground. But this is a point of debate that you'll see in the field, right? All right, so... So we hit Merriam-Webster, and, and that's like sort of the go-to when you don't have a defined term. But then another go-to is the obviously, or I'm going to say obviously, another go-to is your, is your International Building Code. And another portion is NFPA. 5,000, the Building Construction and Safety Code. So you have NFPA 5,000, and you have the International ICC Codes um, that will help us understand the definition. Now, if I think about... Um, basements in the NFPA 5000, the 2024 edition. So this would be chapter three definitions of um, uh, found in NFPA 5000, which is the, the which is the building construction and safety code. We have um, 3.3.53 is uh, is the term basement. And we have to um, we have to figure out a defi definition. Any story of a building wholly or partly below grade, grade plane, that is not considered the first story above grade plane, and it's said to see 3.3292.1, first story above grade plane, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. So any story of a building wholly or partly below grade plane, that sort of aligns with the Merriam-Webster's uh, Definition. Remember what Merriam-Webster said, the part of a building that is wholly or partly below ground level. So any story of a building wholly or partly below grade plane. And so instead of ground level, they're saying grade plane. That is not considered the first story above grade plane. 
Okay, that's that's I I like that definition. I'm good with that. How about uh, flood resistance? Now they go further and they talk about basement flood resistance. For all matters related to flood resistant design and construction, the portion of a building having its floor below the finished ground level on all sides. So when it when you deal with flood resistance, now what I here's my guess on this one. I guess the thought process is that if you have a building like the basement on the, I'm in a, I'm in a basement right now. In my basement, I have all four walls are underground. So this could fill up with water if I don't have drains. Uh, but if I had a, a door or I had like a French doors or whatever exiting out the back, then water would naturally flow out. So it probably would not. Uh, it would be less, it would be more flood resistant if it wasn't completely underground. Now, the previous one said to see 33292.1, and I didn't look that one up. 33292.1. So if I go to 3, 3.3 are general definitions, 292. That's a lot of definitions. I hope they like skip some. Yeah, they do. 292. 33, 217, 222, 232, 243. Now, if you have your copy of NFPA link, you'd be able to go to this. You don't need to have the book. Just search online. All right, three two three point three point two ninety two dot one says grade ground level flood resistant. Three point three two nine two dot one three point three two nine two dot one is first story above grade plane. Any story having its finished floor or surface entirely above grade plane except that a basement shall be considered as a first story above grade plane where the finished surface of the floor above the basement is more than six feet above grade plane or two more than 12 feet above the finished level at any point. So, that means if I have 13 foot, anything greater than 12 foot ceilings, it says a finished floor surface entirely above grade plane. This is the first story. A ba except that a basement shall be considered, so it says a basement can be considered a first story above grade plane where the finished surface of the floor above the basement, so that would be my, my floor above this basement, my floor above the basement, is more than six foot above grade plane. So grade plane, so if my earth out... Earth, in my case, grade plane, if I go, oh, how many block up? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 14 block up is grade plane. That would be like where my garage is and that's where the outside, so it's about 14. Just about 14. It's maybe 13. Somewhere in there. I have to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 block up. 13 block up is my grade plane. So. Um, You figure 13 block up, so 13, that's uh, about 8 inches, 
about eight inches, eight blocks. Something like that. So, so you're looking at you're looking at about almost nine feet. Almost nine feet from this floor to the bottom, which I think there's an extra block up there. I'm 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 trying to look. I got like a multiple ceiling here. And there's steps going up, so there might be one more. So let's say nine foot. Say this is nine foot ceilings in this basement. That's the ceiling, and it says though it says it says. Okay, so the first story, so a basement shall be considered the first story above grade plane where the finished surface of the floor above the basement is more than six feet above grade plane. So the first, that would mean that I would have six feet above this nine foot. I'd have to add another six foot. And if that's where the first, the finished surface of the floor above that base, above this basement is that high, then because now you have you have a lot of space above earth right above the gr the ground then you're con this is considered as the first the first story now it doesn't say that it's not considered a basement right it just says it can be considered the first story but it doesn't say it's not considered a basement it would still meet the definition of a basement um and then it says, or more than 12 feet above the finished level at any point. So if my floor upstairs is greater than, the finished floor upstairs is greater than 12 feet above this floor in the basement, then you could consider this the first story of the house. But it would still be considered the basement, right? Because the definition of a basement says any story of a building wholly or partly below grade plane. So the fact that this could meet, that this, that this basement, if it, it, if it either had a ceiling tall enough, <laughs> right? If it had a ceiling tall enough to meet one of those two criteria, this could be considered the first story of my building but it would still be a basement because it is wholly or partly below grade plane. Capish? All right. Whoops. All right. So that's now so that's the definition that's in in the NFPA 5000. So we we read Merriam-Webster we read NFPA 5000. Now let's take a look at now let's take a look at the International Building Code. This is the 2021 edition. And this says a story. You know we know what a story is based upon 5000, NFPA 5000. A story that is not a story above grade plane. And it says see story above grade plane. And we're going to take a look at that. This definition of basement does not apply to the provisions of section for flood loads. So, so we saw a definition, a, a, a different definition in NFPA 5000 for a basement. Now, a story above grade plane is any story having its finished floor surface, any story having its finished floor surface entirely above grade plane. So that would definitely not be this basement, or in which the finished surface of the floor next above is six feet above grade plane or more than 12 feet above the finish. Where did we see that? We saw that over in the building code, uh, NFPA 5000. So this sort of aligns with NFPA 5000. Uh, they both have the same type of language. And then a story is a portion of a building including included between the upper surface of a floor and the upper surface of the floor or roof next above. A story is measured as the vertical distance from top to top of two successive tiers of beams or finished floor surfaces. And for the topmost story from the top of the floor finished, floor finished to the top of the ceiling joist. 
So that's for your attic, right? Or where there's not a ceiling to the top of the roof rafters. All right, so that's all right. So so we sort of we sort of get the gist of what a basement is on, on and we know there's a few sources. It may not be defined in the NEC. We have Merriam-Webster, we have NFPA 5000, and we have the International Building Code. And then when all else fails, you can also probably have the, the uh, words on your drawing that'll indicate this is the basement. But remember, if it says this is first story, you can have the first story that is a basement because the first story meets the definition of a, a, a story of a building a story. I'm telling a story. That's a weird name. Why, not, why the heck they call it a story? A story or floor level. What the, why would you, where would that come from? Where does the orig origins of the word story? I mean, a story is a story, right? It's about uh, Hansel and Gretel or whatever. A story. Why would you call it a story? Anyway. You can have a, 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 the drawing could say this is the first story, but it could also be the basement, right? If a portion or all of that story is underground, which is under your plane level. Plane? Is it plane level? Above grade, below grade. If it's below grade, any portion of it is below grade, then you are, you have a basement. All right, so now that we know what a basement is, let's talk about what equipment we'll find in a basement because this is important. What you will find in a basement, you remember when we did a search of NFPA 70, we had like eight hits, right? We had about eight hits in, um, in NFPA 70 2023 edition, I say eight hits, and I'm just going to do a select, oh, all of NFPA 70. Yeah, we had eight hits. We had eight uses of the term. But remember, the requirements for, for the basement would be expanded based upon what? What's in the basement? So you could have eight well you probably would no i'm not going to say you probably you could have hvac equipment in your basement it could also be in the garage it could be in the attic right the it's not required that you put the hvac equipment in the basement but that's often where you'll find it so you'll have your heating your ventilation you might have a sump pump think about it you might have a sump pump you might have let's do a list Let's do a list. How do I do this? I'm gonna do a new slide. And I'm gonna title this, as we'll show you, I'm gonna title this basement equipment. Okay, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna lower that, make this bigger. So what would you have in a basement? We said HVAC equipment, right? Sump pump. bathroom or a half bath right you may have a bathroom or a half bath you'll have um smokes smoke detectors i know in my in my basement here i have a drop ceiling so there's smoke detectors above the ceiling you may have what else oh how about a hot water tank you could definitely have a, an electric <laughs> A water tank because you know the gas stuff i mean you're not the igniter is not even electric on a on a gas on a gas gas uh hot water tank what else would we have um write them in the notes i mean I, this is not live but please drop down in there what you have oh you might have a wet bar wet bar which means you have a sink a counter and some um, liquids. 
You could have a refrigerator. You could have a refrigerator in 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 the uh, in the basement. I've got one. I've got a 1950 some. Um, it's a frigid air, but it's a General Motors. It's got a General Motors logo right on the front of it. I don't know what the heck when that when that happened, but it's a GM um, General Motors refrigerator. What else? We got receptacles. Receptacles. We have lighting. What else would we have down here? I can't. I can't say like computer equipment because you can have that anywhere. And there's, you know, I got a spider. There's a spider right here. It's a tiny little spider, but he was making a web. Little guy. Um, we got lighting. I'm just looking at my basement. I have a little wet bar over here. Um, closets. Crawl space, you can have, well, that's not equipment. That's not equipment. We're looking at equipment. What other equipment? Come on, guys, what, gals, what, what kind of equipment would I have down here? I think that that's probably, I mean, I got HVAC, sump pump, bathroom, uh, bathroom, and that, that the bathroom could, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do two things. You, a sump pump, in my opinion, is a, a little bit different than a grinder pump because a grinder pump um, is the bad water, right? So a grinder pump is going to be your, um, your, your um, if that thing fails, you're going to be knee deep in it really quick. Um, but a sump pump is there for clean, clean water, right? So that would be your rain water, things like that that would come into the building. So you got HVAC, sump pumps, grinder pumps, all of that good stuff. So, and you got receptacles, obviously receptacles. And can I not spell refrigerator? There's no DG, it's refrigerator. I don't know why I put a DG. Okay, so there's an example of equipment that you may find in, in the... Um, what do you call it, a basement, right? Now, let's talk about HVAC equipment. You have Article 424, Fixed Electric Space Heating Equipment. You have Article 665, Induction and Dielectric Heating Equipment. You have Article 425, Fixed Resistant and Electrode Industrial Process. That wouldn't be to a residential dwelling unit. Um, you might have, it depends, you might have it, you might. Um, for Article 427 is fixed electric heating equipment for pipelines and vessels. It depends. If your basement is, I don't know, I, I don't think, like in my basement, the, the temperature never gets above 60-some you know, degrees. So, I don't know, I don't know, oh, I, um, I can't tell you what, what my temperature is here right now. Um, 425, 422, central heating equipment, which I never understood why. 422, central heating equipment. Never understood why it was there. Why isn't that over in... Why is 422.12 central heating equipment... Why is central heating equipment in 422 and not in... And not in 440, air conditioning and... Ref well, so Article 440 is air conditioning and refrigeration. Air conditioning. If I heat the air, am I conditioning the air? Yeah, I would think so. So is air conditioning only cooling, or does that include heat? I would think that it's both, but... It is what it is. Air conditioning and refrigeration. Why wouldn't 422.12, central heating equipment, be, it says central heating equipment other than fixed electric space heating equipment shall be supplied by an individual brand circuit. So this is, so when I think about the, the circuit requirements for a basement, You'll have the square footage, like if it's a residential, and we're going to focus on residential dwelling units, I guess I should have said that way in the beginning. 
But if you're looking at the circuit requirements for a home, how do we do this? We go to Article 220, we calculate the VA per square foot, we do all of that jazz, we figure out the number of branch circuits minimum that's required, and we divvy those up. Um, but then you have to add on to that any of the additional, right? So, you know, if, if for example, my wet bar, I technically, I don't have permanent provisions. So... I don't have permanent provisions for cooking, so it doesn't meet the definition of a kitchen. So I don't need my two my two um, appliance brand circuits for a wet bar, or do I? I don't believe so. So, what do you think? What do you think about that? Uh, do you think you need for a wet bar two? two uh, um, uh, appliance brand circuits. I don't think so. I think that's kitchen requirements. So in any case, it would have to be. So in any case, um, in addition, so what you do is you calculate, you go to 220, you're calculating, calculating your load, you're determining the number of brand circuits, and then you've got to look at the above the bare minimum or above those those numbers, you have the individual branch circuits. You'll have HVAC equipment, uh, in in based on four twenty two at least. You're going to need to have for your central heating equipment an individual branch circuit. Now there are two exceptions: auxiliary equipment such as a pump valve humidifier or electrostatic air cleaner directly associated with the heating equipment shall be permitted to be connected to the same branch circuit. Uh, permanently connected air conditioning equipment shall be permitted to be connected to the same branch circuit. So your central heating and your air of uh, permanently connected can all be on that same branch, individual branch, or that same branch circuit. So oh, you gotta understand that based upon the equipment you're gonna have in the basement, you may need an individual branch circuit or an additional branch circuit. There was another requirement that we put in, in two, in the branch circuits required. Branch circuits required, 210. 210, branch circuits identification. Branch circuit ratings. Your required outlets, yes. One of the changes that we recently made was to recognize that your when you have a receptacle for like say a burglar alarm system we don't use burglar alarm we use a security system or if you have a receptacle for that type of equipment that that cannot be counted as one of the required outlets so um, that's an important part. Uh, so you have to understand what, how do I count up my required re outlets and, and what counts for the, for the required outlets and what doesn't. And if it doesn't, then it means you're going to basically say, look, that, that you can't count that as your, as one of the required. So you have to add additional receptacle outlets for that application. And in some cases, you might have equipment that says, supply this on a dedicated brand circuit. And you may wanna do that anyway, right? Say, say a sump pump, for example, you might not wanna put that on the same circuit as something else. You might want a dedicated brand circuit just for that, or an individual brand circuit just for that load. From a reliability perspective, you'll increase the reliability. Now, an argument could be made that if you put that also on a lighting circuit, then when the light doesn't work, then you know that the pump is out. So I don't know. Got to think about things like that. All right. So what else? Okay. So you have so you have HVAC equipment, which we know there are specific articles that would address the requirements. So if you if your HVAC equipment is in your basement, then you have to follow all of those rules. Some pumps, any of the pumps. So you you might be in Article Four Thirty for motors, right? 
Um, so be mindful that the moment you have a motor driven load that you might have, um, it's, you're going to go to a different article and you could be in 420, uh, 4, 440 for motors or for, uh, you can be in one of the HVAC equipment because the pump might be associated with your HVAC equipment. Think of that. You probably don't have um, a pool in your basement, but you never know. I'm just looking through some of the re the requirements that you might um, that you might run into. But a pump, for the most part, you're going to be looking at the motor motor requirements for Article 430, possibly 440 for HVAC equipment, all that good stuff, or air conditioning equipment. And you'll have to make sure that you protect the motor correctly, and you're going to be following, hopefully, the the markings on the pump itself, etc. So that would be your sump pump and your grinder pump. Bathrooms. Well, we know the requirements for bathrooms. We have GFCI requirements for bathrooms. We have individual branch circuits. We have uh, an individual. We have branch circuit requirements for bathrooms. So. We know what the definition of a bathroom is, an area including a sink with one or more of the following, a toilet, a urinal, a tub, a shower. So I have like right on the other side of this wall, I have a commode in there, a toilet, and I have a sink. So I have a sink and a toilet. So that is the meets the definition of a bathroom. I can't have a panel board. Well, I can have a panel board in my bathroom. I just can't put any circuit breakers in it. Um, so an article 240.24, I think to article 240 section 240.24 Edward E maybe, I don't know, somewhere in there. Um, and then, and, and if I put receptacles in my bathroom, I'm going to have to follow the rules in 210.52 that tells me where and where I cannot put a receptacle in that bathroom. Um, 210.11 uh, will tell me I need to have a branch circuit, a 20 amp branch circuit going to that bathroom. Um, I only have lighting requirements. I'm going to have switching requirements for that light, for the light that's in that bathroom. So remember, we're in the basement. But again, I have a defined space in my basement. Now, if I modify my basement and I make it a living room, now I have a living room in the basement. If I have a kitchen in my basement, if I put permanent provisions, if I would add a stove over here of some sort, or if I, in my opinion, if I permanently mount a microwave, I know that's a debatable topic. Go watch the, the program on kitchens. But if I put a permanent provisions for cooking in this little kitchenette area, this wet bar area that I have here, I've got a sink. If I put a stove over there, I have a kitchen. And that would mean I, were, I need to meet all of the requirements for kitchens in my basement, right? So, and remember, I didn't have to add a basement to this house, but I did. I didn't have to put a wet bar, but I did. Um, refrigerator, I have a refrigerator. Okay, so then, so then you got to go to 422. Let's go to 422 real quick. 422 appliances, right? I'm going to have appliances in my basement. So let's go to 422.5 GFCI protection. Appliances identified in A1 through A7, 60 amps or less, shall be provided with a Class A protection for personnel. I, got an, I won't have an automotive vacuum machine. I'm not going to get a car down here. Drinking water cooler and bottle fill station. Never know. Never know. Cord and plug connected high pressure spray wash. I hope not. <laughs> uh, tire inflation machine. Absolutely no. Um, sump pump. Absolutely. I'm going to have a sump pump. Then I have to have GFCI protection for the sump pump. Dishwasher. I could have a dishwasher. If I, in my little wet bar, put a dishwasher, it still wouldn't meet the definition of a kitchen. But I could put a dishwasher if I was, you know, wanted a dishwasher over there. Um, and then 210.8, let's take a look at 210.8, because 210.8, uh, I think it's D. 210.8D uh, may not be right. I could be. D, specific appliances. Now, this is all of the appliances that have to have GFCI protection. 
most of them are the same. Some pumps, dishwashers, could I have an electric range? That would be permanent provisions for cooking. Boom, I put an electric range down here and I am into what? Meeting the definition of a kitchen. Wall-mounted ovens, counter-mounted cooking units, clothes dryers. Ooh, that's another thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go back to this. Right? I could have... Um, I could have a oh, dishwasher. We're going to put that in here. I could have a dishwasher. I can have a microwave. I could have... Um, Clothes dryer. I can have a washing machine. Uh, in my home, when my the home I grew up in, we had um, we had what do you call a um, we had a basement that had our washer and dryer in the basement. Um, so that's all I gotta say about that. Right, so we have the washing machine, we can have a clothes dryer, and these bring in other areas of the NEC, not just those eight references to a basement. So if I had a clothes dryer and a washing machine, I'm into what? A laundry room or a laundry area. Um, very good, very good. All right, so... I, I would, I'm going to be in other articles and other sections of the code that might address the specific equipment or the areas that I am building in my basement. Um, what else? Yeah. So the basement equipment will drive requirements. The fact that I'm in a basement will drive requirements, but... Uh, oh, um... Let's go back. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. Hold on. Let's just take a look back at NFPA link. Uh, two ten. Uh, so let's do this. Yeah, let's look at two ten fifty two G, because the two ten fifty two G is titled basements, garages, and accessory buildings, and it says for one or two family dwellings. And multifamily dwellings, at least one receptacle outlet shall be installed in the areas specified in G1. And G1 is garages, G2 is accessory buildings, and G3 is basements. So you know you have to have at least one receptacle outlet installed in each of those. These receptacles shall be in addition to receptacles required for specific equipment. So if I have a... Um, um, Premises security system. There's the, there's the language we added in 23. Receptacles supplying only a permanently installed premises security system shall not be considered as meeting these requirements. And then if you have a receptacle that is required for specific equipment, and I would say uh, possibly a premises security system, but if you have, uh, if you have any piece of equipment, like the HVAC 422, where it said the air conditioning unit, the central air has to be on its individual branch circuit. Well, that's an individual branch circuit. Uh, you probably wouldn't be cord and plug connected. But in any case, if you had any piece of equipment that required you to have a an individual, uh, a receptacle required for that equipment, then you can't count it as the 21052G3. And 21052G3 says in each separate unfinished portion of a basement. So what is a separate unfinished portion of a basement? So my basement, I have an area over here, which you can see it's separated by, it's like a, there's like a, an entryway here. So would you consider this an area and that an area? And I would need one in each. And then there's another area. There's one over here that, that's um, like the width of the stairs that's going up and there are two supporting walls or at least one of them is a supporting wall. Boy, I could remove one of those walls. Never thought about that. Anyway, uh, I have two walls over there, so that's a space. So this room, this basement has one, two, three, four. So four separate, oh, 
in each separate unfinished portion of a basement. So what if it's finished? Well, if it's finished, then it would meet the the um, it would meet the requirements, say, of a living room or whatnot, right? Or it could be a hallways. So there's hallways and foyers. Oh my. Laundry area. So if I had a, a portion that was finished as a laundry area, then I would have to follow the laundry area requirements, right? Um, outdoor outlets. It wouldn't be outdoor. There's bathrooms. If I finish, uh, like I have a bathroom, there's receptacle outlets required for bathrooms. Um, if I had, uh, well, I don't have an island or a peninsula, but I do have a countertop. So if I have a countertop, then I would have to meet the requirements for countertops. Right, for and then wall spaces. So receptacle outlets shall be installed so that no point along the wall line is more than 24 inches measured horizontally from the receptacle. So once I finish a room, now I have other requirements that I need to follow. What are your thoughts on that? I'm in the basement. If I'm if I have a finished basement, then I would need to follow the wall space requirements for the number of receptacle outlets and all that jazz. Would you agree? And then what happens if one side of my wall is my finished basement? Let's say I left it as block. I have carpeting down, I've got dropped ceiling, I've got lighting, I've got a television on the wall, and the one side of the wall is block. It's a finished basement. I've got to follow the rules for receptacle placements. Because what does it say in 210.52? This section provides requirements for 15 to 20 amp receptacle outlets. The receptacles required by this section shall be in addition to any receptacle that is as follows. Part of a luminaire, controlled by listed, blah, 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 blah. Permanently installed electric baseboard heaters equipped with factory such receptacle outlets shall not be connected to the heater. So there's general provisions in every kitchen, family room, dining room, living room, parlor, library, den, sunroom, bedroom, rec room, similar area of dwelling. In. So if I have, if I turn this into a living room, I have a television here. I've got a television. I have a couch. I have a couch down here. I've got two chairs, three chairs. I've got some curio cabinets and I've got a, a, a television. Does it meet the definition of a living room? or family room, parlor, library. I got, you see what's behind me. Would you say this meets the definition of a library? And I must then do I, I need to follow the rules because it's a finished basement. The moment you finish the basement, you're pulling into the room. Now you have all of these requirements that you have to follow. You know, you're not required to finish the basement. You can leave it unfinished and then boom, all you're left down here is four receptacles. And oh, by the way, they're in, since they're in the basement, they're going to have to be GFCI protected. If I have HVAC equipment, that's going to be a dedicated circuit. If I have an electric hot water tank, dedicated circuit. Make sense? Piece of cake. All right. So, I don't know what else to talk about on basements. I mean... I think my I think the base rule is, and, and here's my here's my Tom's words of wisdom, which don't mean much. <laughs> um, understand what the definition of a basement is first. Where am I going to get that? Merriam-Webster, NFPA five thousand, International Building Code, IBC. So those are the three different areas that you could go to to understand what is the definition. What is a basement? There's a lot of opportunity to understand that. And I don't th I think it's pretty pretty daggone clear. Once you understand that this is a basement, now you're following the rules for basements. And the rules for basements are only eight areas in the NEC. But whatever it is that you're putting into the basement, it doesn't really matter that it's in the basement, right? Because you're following other areas of the code, which will give you the provisions. And none of those provisions, to, well, the, you may find... I'm not going to say none. I'm going to say you, you. there may be special considerations if it's in a basement. I'm not going to say anything more than that. But I only found eight locations, okay, where it says basements. If I searched the code for basement, 
all of NFPA 70. I got 21052. We know those are your receptacles. 334 um, non metallic sheath cable installed in the wall of unfinished basements. So you got some special requirements for non metallic NMC cable. Um, 21052G, that's your receptacles. 210.70, that's your lighting. 382.12. Um, This is your 382. What's 382? I can't remember what 382 is. 382 is all oh, non-metallic extensions. So there's special, uh, not permitted. It's not permitted in unfinished basements, attics, or roof spaces. Okay, so there's some there's some conditions in that 382, uh, 210.70, 760.121, 760 is going to be your fire. Fire alarm systems, so um, 760.121, right? So there are some provisions for 760.121B, the branch circuit supplying the fire alarm equipment shall comply with the following. The branch circuit shall supply no other loads. Where is basement? Where is basement? Where is basement? Location of the branch circuit overcurrent protective device shall be permanently identified. The circuit disconnect means shall be have red identification, shall be accessible only to qualified persons. Has to have fire alarm circuit on. The red identification shall not damage the overcurrent devices. And the fire alarm branch circuit disconnect means shall be permitted to be secured in the on position. Informational note. Oh, there's a 210.8A5 exception for refrigerant. For, for requirements on receptacles in dwelling in unfinished basements that supply power for fire alarm systems. Ooh, we removed that. <laughs> so that has to come out of, uh, of 760.121 because we removed the, uh, the exception because we said it's already over there. All right. I'd say I look forward to your public input, but public inputs have closed. So maybe those who deal with 760 will do that on their own. All right. So hopefully you get the gist of what we're dealing with in basements. The moment you finish it, it becomes whatever room you finished it as, whether it be a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room, a library, Whatever. If you don't finish it, you got some minimum requirements. If the moment you put HVAC equipment down here, you've got to follow those rules. The moment you put a kitchen down here, you got to follow those rules. A bathroom, follow those rules. The moment you finish it, you're into the receptacle requirements. And remember, you didn't have to even put a basement under the building. Okay, so don't complain when you go, oh my gosh, I have to put GFCI. All right, well, you know how much did it cost to put the basement in? You didn't have to do it. Um, and when you say, oh my gosh, I put a wet bar in and I have to put GFCI receptacle there? Uh, yeah, you do. Okay, you didn't have to put a wet bar there. All right, the same with a swimming pool. Same with anything else that's up there above the bare minimum building requirements. When you put it in, there's a cost associated with it. So think about all of the costs associated with that. Uh, when you put a basement in, you're going to have to put uh, special drainage in and all that other good stuff. You're going to have to put sores in. Uh, not sores, but uh, drainage in. You're going to have to put uh, a lot of different things to accommodate the basement. So make sure you cover all of those in your design. All right. So hopefully we got something out of our discussion for basements today. I apologize for not being able to be here live conversing. I might be able to be, hopefully I'll be chatting it up when this is up there. So thank you for staying in there for a little over an hour with me. Thanks for all that you do for the electrical industry and for electrical safety. Remember to hit that thumbs up. Don't forget, please become an IAEI member. I'm enjoying my membership, and I would hope that you will enjoy yours as well. Once you're a member, you can shoot me a note out there on IEI's website. They give us uh, opportunities to connect with people online. Take advantage of that. Connect with each other. Ask each other questions. Let's make it social. Let's learn together. Thank you for spending this time with me. Thanks for what you do for the electrical industry. Thanks for what you do for electrical safety. Remember to stay safe and please stay healthy.
See you next week.